and those are our cabbage rolls. Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Jameson and this is how I cook. I'm gonna show you guys how to make cabbage rolls stuffed with corned beef. That's right, a nice bit of comfort food and I'm gonna show you a little bit of a technique of how you can make this into an awesome one pot meal. I wanna thank one of my subscribers, shout out to Katie for this wonderful suggestion. I hope this does your father's memory justice. And also shout out to, uh, like a second mother to me, shout out to Miss Alice for suggesting that I use this recipe. She told me about this recipe while we were celebrating her daughter's birthday. Up next on This Is How I Cook, corned beef stuffed cabbage rolls. Okay guys, before we get too far into the recipe and these ingredients, do me a favor, hit that subscription button and turn on those notifications. It really says thank you to the channel and it really helps the channel grow. Thank you for your support. So we've got the star of our show, a can of corned beef. We've got a cup of rice. We're gonna steam the rice as part of our accompaniment for the meal. We've obviously got cabbage. And what you see me have that I've done here is that I've taken the outer leaves of the cabbage off and we're gonna use these larger leaves to help make our rolls. And I'm gonna show you how to take these leaves off, off this cabbage head so that you don't tear them and break them. It's really easy to do this. And then lastly, we got a little bit of time and as usual, we'll adjust with some salt and pepper at the end to taste. So when you buy a head of cabbage, the outer leaves are already pretty loose. So those are really easy to get off. But when you get down closer to the head of the cabbage or the interior core of the cabbage, you wanna take the leaves off. And the easiest way to do this is to come under here and find the stem of the next layer of the cabbage to remove. In this case, it looks like this stem is already loose, so we'll just take this one on off and set it to the side. But this layer, on this layer, this stem is the next one that I wanna remove. It's the outer one. So I just come in, you can use a knife or your finger and break, break this stem. Just be gentle with it. And then what you wanna do, once you break it, is you just wanna take your time and begin to lift the outer portions or the edge of the leaf off of the cabbage. And you don't wanna just rip it off because it'll tear. So you just take your time and ease up underneath. And I like to come up under here right where the stem was at and kind of work my finger underneath gently. And then once you give that little tug, it comes off in one piece. And now you've got a beautiful cabbage leaf that you can make your cabbage roll from. You wanna to wanna to take your leaves, and I've already done a couple ahead of time. Give these a good rinse under some cold water. That way they don't have any grit. And then we're gonna blanch these in some uh, simmering water until they become slightly tender so that we can roll them easy to stuff them with our corned beef. Okay, so our next step is we're gonna take our cabbage leaves and we're gonna blanch them in some hot water. So I've got my water um, to, to a nice bowl, but it's not a rolling bowl, as they would say. And so you'll just take your leaves and you wanna just put them into the water, make sure they get submerged. And if they don't wanna go down, that's fine. We'll, we're gonna tuck them in and make sure they get nice and submerged in the water. And you know, if you have to do a few at a time, that's fine. And then just come back and do some more. And all we wanna do is make sure that the leaves get down into this hot water. And like I said, we're not trying to boil these and as if we were trying to cook the actual cabbage. We just want to blanch the cabbage. And you can see that the, the leaves are brightening up and turning green because of the hot water. And if you have any that don't wanna go down, just get you a spoon and work them down into the hot water. And now the last thing we wanna do is once we've blanched these in this water for a little bit, we wanna take these out and let them drain. And cool off. All right, so our next step is we've got our corned beef. And what we're gonna do is we, we need to microwave this just a little bit. But when it comes out the can, it has a lot of congealed fat. And so we wanna loosen this up a little bit, this loaf up, so that we can actually manipulate it, season it, and then stuff it into our cabbage leaves. I'm not trying to cook it, so I'm gonna microwave this probably 
for about a minute and a half. And so all we want to do now at this point is just break apart this loaf. I didn't drain anything out of this. I didn't take anything out. I want all those juices in here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in some of our thyme. I'm going to put in a pinch of pepper. We're going to adjust this with a little bit of salt. I'm going to put in a little bit of onion powder as well. A little bit of garlic powder. And then we're going to take our thyme and mix all this together. You can use your hands to do this if you want to. And that's our filling for our cabbage rolls. So we got our beautiful cabbage. And so what we want to do is take some of our filling here, our corned beef filling, and we just want to lay a good bit in. And then once we have that inside, kind of work it into its initial shape. And then we come in and just take our rolls. And then we take the corners. We start with the top, but we take our corners and pinch them in like this. And then we come back and we roll them tight just like that. And we let their weight hold them down. And then that becomes our cabbage roll. If you run into a stiff stem, like this one, just take it and cut it off. So I've got a large pan here, and this pan has a lid that comes with it. And what I'm doing is I'm bringing the water up to a boil, and I'm also going to add in a little bit of olive oil. And I'm gonna put in a chicken bouillon cube. You can use chicken broth if you don't have a chicken bouillon cube. And so now, we want to add in our cup of rice. And what we want to do is spread this out evenly. So every place there's water in here in the pan, we want to get our rice spread out there. So what's the trick here with cooking the rice in this wide bottom pan this way? The, rice, the recipe for rice normally is about one cup of rice to one and a half cups of water. But because we have a larger surface area, the water is gonna boil off a lot faster. So I added a little bit more water, so probably about half a cup of water. So I put in two cups of water in there. And that'll help make sure that the rice cooks evenly at the same time and we don't you know, have chewy undercooked rice. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our cabbage rolls that we've prepared and we're gonna set them into the pan. Once this rice gets probably, I'd say, 25% cooked. Um, and, and at that point in time, we'll cover the whole thing again. And then that will be our one pot meal of our cabbage rolls stuffed with corned beef. So at this point, you wanna check your rice. And if it tries to stick on you, and just add some more water. Because it cooks really fast this way. And then what I'll do is I'll just break it back up. If this happens to you, this is really cooking people. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my beautiful cabbage rolls I've got and we're gonna lay them right in here so that they can steam as this rice finishes cooking. I'm gonna add a little bit more water in there just to make sure my rice doesn't dry out. And then all this is gonna to steam together and finish cooking the rolls. Close this up and allow all that steam that's accumulating in there to boil. And once the rice dries up, then you're gonna have a beautiful set of steamed cabbage rolls stuffed with corned beef, and it's a whole one pot meal. Okay, our rice looks fully cooked. Still got a little bit of moisture left in here. 
and the cabbage is nice and steamed. The way you can tell is because you can see through the leaves, they become translucent, especially the lighter leaves. And so at this point, we're practically done. I had to add a little bit more water to my rice because it dried out before it was actually done and the cabbage rolls were steamed. So if that happens to you, just add some more water. Okay guys, let me show you how we plate this up. So the first thing I like to do here is I'm gonna be gentle and get some of this beautiful rice. And we're gonna create a nice bed of this rice. And you may have to move your rolls around to get to your rice, but that's okay. Create a nice bed of that rice. I love how fluffy this is. And then what we wanna do is come in with one of our rolls. We wanna come in here with this. And since this is actually gonna be my dinner, I'm gonna put in another one, just like that. There we go. And those are our cabbage rolls. Okay guys, time for the taste test. Let's get some of this cabbage. Mm. Oh. oh. First thing I taste is the thyme that we added, the aromatics. This rice has a wonderful flavor from the chicken bouillon cube and the olive oil. The cabbage is nice, has a little bit of sort of like an al dente texture to it. If you like your cabbage to be more tender, you can just blanch your cabbage longer in that first step. But this is perfect. Wow. <laughs> Amazing food. Amazing food. Guys, give that a shot. They make corned beef and they make corned beef hash, which has potatoes in it. If you want potatoes inside yours, get the corned beef hash. If you don't want potatoes inside yours and you want to make your own custom uh, mix for, of stuffing, then just get a can of corned beef and add your favorite ingredients to it. Guys, thank you again for watching my channel. I'm Jameson, and this is how I cook. Shout out to Katie. I hope that served your father's memory and legacy justice. Thank you for entrusting me with that opportunity and that suggestion. And uh, Miss Alice also, thank you for a wonderful recipe. You guys be good. I gotta go finish dinner because I'm starving. Man, this is perfect. This isn't even St. Patrick's Day. It's St. Jameson's Day. And I'm enjoying this.